Let me first uh, take this opportunity to welcome all of you present here. Uh, members of the executive, members of the legislature, members of independent um, commissions, uh, our members of the diplomatic corps, and friends. This function is not just a part of the traditions and practices of our public service tech sector. It has its foundations in the Constitution, which, besides national values and principles of governance, has entire chapters devoted to the public service as well as leadership and integrity. These provisions, alongside other laws enacted under them, when seeking our and receiving public services, define the expectations and entitlement of citizens. For us, they also set the standard we must uphold at all times in our performance individually and also collectively. It is important for us to understand that in entering the public service, we are under an explicit and implied binding contract with the people of Kenya to perform the tasks and duties entrusted to us and manage resources under our stewardship to a specific minimum standard set both by the law and by the Constitution. It is therefore always a good strategy to establish the document and clear terms and conditions to which we and the citizens of Kenya can make reference in evaluating whether we are doing our jobs as is required of us and providing meaningful value to the people of Kenya. In electing their government, the people express specific expectations and entrust us to deliver fully and also to deliver on time. I am committed to honoring that trust fully. And to do so, I rely on you to equally do your part as set out in your terms of appointment and as demanded by the Constitution, the law of Kenya, and the electorate. Our performance contract with citizens was formalized upon the inauguration of this administration in our commitment under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda for Kenya. This plan embodies our commitment to addressing critical priorities, including reducing the cost of living, managing inflation, taking all steps to create jobs, eradicate hunger, enhancing food production and productivity in general, and expanding the tax base and improving our foreign exchange balances. We also pledged to enhance governance, democracy, and the rule of law, protect rights and freedoms, uphold our national sovereignty, and achieve inclusive economic growth. These are the benchmarks by which Kenyans will assess our success. As we signed the second generation ministerial performance contract for the year 2024-25, let us reflect on our commitments, the ones we made, and the weight of the responsibility that we have on our shoulders. These performance contracts are not mere bureaucratic rituals or ceremonial formalities. They represent firm and solemn commitments to implement the inclusive and transformative goals of our plan. I must emphasize, and I encourage you to internalize the strategic pillars of this agenda and their interconnectedness. These pillars demand greater efficiency in current programs and projects and a bold redefinition of our service delivery paradigm. 
Agriculture, for example, is critical to ensuring food security, empowering farmers, creating an ecosystem of micro, small, and medium enterprise, drive job creation, and also build on our economic growth. Affordable housing, on the other hand, enhances dignity and stimulates not just the construction sector, but the whole manufacturing ecosystem in our country. Universal health coverage fosters a healthy, productive population, making sure that no citizen is left behind. While the digital superhighway and creative economy positions Kenya as a global innovative and innovation hub, enhancing our efficiency and also building on our competitiveness. These pillars define my performance contract with the people, which have been directly executed by me and through cabinet secretaries and accounting officers. We are therefore united under a solemn bond to fulfill these commitments for the benefit of our nation and to make this country a better place for all of us. Performance contracting arises from our recognition of the need for a structured mechanism to transform Kenya into an industrialized middle-income economy with a high quality of life for all our citizens by the year 2030 as envisioned in our Vision 2030. It subjects each of our actions to objective benchmarks to evaluate progress and ensures that the needs and aspirations of the people remain at the center of every effort that we make. Over the years, performance contracting has proven to be a robust accountability framework, ensuring the effective use of public resources to meet constitutional mandates and also to meet citizen expectations. This year's contracts integrate the priorities of the fourth term medium plan plan under Vision 2030 and the strategic pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. These plans aim to maximize the impact of scarce resources on Kenyans, particularly those at the bottom of the economic pyramid. A society, ladies and gentlemen, is best judged by how it treats its most vulnerable members. And interventions targeting those at the bottom of the ladder will eventually uplift everyone. By aligning their functions with these commitments, every ministry, department, and agency contributes to a rising tide of inclusive prosperity. The contracts we signed today are action plans for urgent, precise, and efficient execution. <clears throat> I expect each cabinet secretary to take personal responsibility for achieving the targets outlined in their ministry's contracts. There is no room, ladies and gentlemen, for excuse or delay or failure. Accountability must cascade through all levels of ministries, departments, and agencies to individual officers. At the end of the financial year, each cabinet secretary will receive a performance report card reflecting their ministry's achievements. These scorecards will ensure that performance contracting is not seen as a meaningless ritual. This scorecard will carry recognition, rewards, and sanctions which will be applied without fail. Excellence, integrity, efficiency, and consistency will be rewarded, while failure, negligence, waste, and misconduct will promptly invite corrective action. It is important that performance contracting is deployed in ways that raise the levels of engagement and motivation 
and promote greater conformity with the values and principles of public service. In other words, I fully expect to see continuous improvement in responsiveness, efficiency, and integrity of our officers collectively and individually. To ensure seamless implementation, the National Treasury will disburse available budgetary allocations on time. Lack of funds or delay in their release should not be an excuse for failure to serve citizens. Consequently, our planning, budgeting, and execution functions must operate in closer harmony to achieve this goal. After more than a decade, I believe that the time has come to institutionalize performance management. This is why a public service performance management bill is being finalized and will soon be stabled in Parliament. Through legislation, we will entrench accountability and promote the highest standards of service delivery at all levels of government. To strengthen coordination, I have also established an office to focus on performance and delivery management in the Executive Office of the President. Through this office, all MDS would be facilitated to quickly address performance deficiencies and oversee the timely implementation of corrective measures. Performance management is a best practice that must include the entirety of government and no taxpayer-funded institution should be exempt from the mandate to deliver. I commend constitutional commissions, county governments, and institutions that have embraced performance contracting and urge those that are yet to adopt this framework to do so in the spirit of accountability and conformity with the values and principles of public service. Because overall accountability rests with me, I take this responsibility and opportunity to assure you of my full support in fostering a performance-driven culture within the public service in furtherance of faster delivery of our national transformation agenda. Each one of us is required to deliver on our commitments, and the best way to do so is by working together, united by the urgency of the need to transform Kenya and ensure that every citizen experience the full promise of this country's abundant opportunities and possibilities. I look forward to working with each and every one of you, and I am happy that on this occasion we have Chairman of Parastatals, we have a Chief Executive of um, Government Agencies present here, so that we can approach this with a whole of government drive and momentum. I want to assure you that although we are in a difficult place globally, economically, but I am very confident that we have the team, we have the people, and we have the plan and the goodwill to transform our nation. I have no doubt in my mind, and there is no room for failure. We must succeed. We must build on the synergies that exist within government departments, work together towards creating the momentum that is going to make each and everyone succeed. I want us to understand that the failure of one sector of government, one department, one agency, one ministry affects the overall performance of government. And therefore, it is our collective responsibility to make sure that using the whole of government approach, that 
we ensure that we build the necessary momentum and also synergy so that we can succeed together. The executive will not succeed if the legislature does not succeed. And the judiciary will not succeed if the executive or the legislature does not succeed. The success of Kenya is going to be the success of every arm of government and every department of government and every agency of government. And that is how we are going to succeed. I want to assure us, as the people of Kenya, that we are in a very pivotal moment. We have taken on a transformative pathway. We have taken on very difficult assignments. For a very long time, close to 15, 20 years, we haven't thought clarity, with clarity about our education and the funding of our education. We have decided this time round to bite a bullet and sort out the funding in our education sector and provide clarity on the education of our children. For a very long time, we have imported food in Kenya when we have the wherewithal, the capacity to produce enough food in our country. We've taken on that responsibility and we are making strides. This year, by God's grace, in a very long time, we will not import some of the food products, including maize. I am equally very proud that we are making significant progress in the production of sugar in Kenya. Something that has been so difficult, we've had to look for Comesa safeguard um, waivers since I was Minister for Agriculture almost 10 years ago. But this year, by God's grace, and with our farmers working hard and the support we've given them, we have seen a drastic reduction in importation of sugar. We have taken on another very difficult assignment to make sure that we give decent dwellings to the people of Kenya especially the vulnerable, especially the disadvantaged, those who live in slums without toilets, without electricity, with no sanitation. We've taken on that assignment because we have decided a different pathway for Kenya. Rather than lament about our situation, we have taken on the responsibility to do something about it, however difficult it may be. We have taken on the responsibility of universal health coverage. I know two successive presidents have attempted and they didn't quite succeed. Two successive governments have attempted, they didn't quite succeed. We have decided that we are taking on this challenge because there are too many Kenyans that die out of illnesses that we can treat. There are too many Kenyans who end up in squalor and poverty because of hospital bills. We have decided that this time round, we must get it right and make it possible for every citizen, irrespective of their financial status, that they can get the highest level of treatment in Kenya. <laughs> Difficult, yes, but rather than lament about 
a not so working NHIF, an NHIF that has bills dating 10 years, 15 years, we've decided to correct that situation. And I promise you, we will confound the naysayers. We will succeed. <laughs> this country will not fail. This great nation that God has given us will succeed. The enemies of Kenya will be put to shame because we are going to succeed and we are going to take this country forward. I am persuaded and I am very clear and I am focused on making sure that together with all of us working as leaders in the Republic of Kenya and all of us understand the more authority you have, the greater the responsibility that rests on your shoulders. And the greater the responsibility you have on your shoulders, the higher the accountability that you are judged by. So all of us must work together towards making Kenya succeed. This country of ours, this home that God has given us, we must work tirelessly to make it succeed, to make it great, so that we can bequeath the next generation of Kenyans a better country, much more organized country, a country that shares prosperity, a united uh, country. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am asking of all of you, the people who serve in different uh, capacities, the people who have the privilege and honor to occupy whatever office in the service of the people of Kenya, that we join hands, we work together, and we focus on making this nation great. I want to thank you very much for coming for this function. I look forward to working with the ministers and the PSS and uh, those who run different government agencies in making sure that uh, we deliver on the commitments, on the mandate, and on the assignments that have been signed off here today so that our nation can succeed and we can meet the expectations of the people of Kenya. We will make um, uh, the other steps as we, as we go. I'm sure every ministry is going to look at the individual departments and also agencies in the different uh, ministries to make sure that they become part of this whole of government approach in the delivery of our assignment given to us by the people of Kenya. Thank you very much. God bless you all, and God bless our great country, Kenya. Santin Sam. Another round.